Good evening, this is GC and English News Edition, and you're watching with me, Ning Hoi Kim Kong Sai. First, the headlines. Gugi MLS are governor to intervene and reject unconstitutional HSC recommendation. Israel accuses six Al Jazeera journalists of being Hamas terrorists. Media Network denies. News in detail. In a formal letter addressed to Laxman Prasad Acharya, the Honorable Governor of Manipur, Kulki MLS, have expressed strong opposition to a recent HAC resolution concerning the administrations of autonomous district councils, ADCS. The controversial resolution number 59, 2024, stated that a committee of 20 members will be formed to oversee ADC administrations with 18 members selected from former ADC officials and local experts and only two government nominees. The Kuki MLS argued that, argue that this decision undermines democratic principles and it is unconstitutional, citing concern about bias and divisiveness. The MLS highlighted that the resolution was passed under conditions that prevented many members from attending the ACSC meeting due to ongoing law and order issues in the state. They have said that the resolution violates the fundamental democratic ethos of local governance and operates outside the established ADC acts. In light of this concern, the Cookie MLA has reiterated that their demand for a UT with legislative powers, emphasizing that this reflects the aspirations of their community. They argue that the governor to intervene and ensure that the constitutions of India and ADC Act are upheld for the benefit of the public. A 42-year-old man was found dead under mysterious circumstances in Jharjampur, Manipur on Wednesday night. Police say that the man was found with injury marks on his head and chest. The deceased was identified as Henry Aguite. He was a resident of Natal village in Cherichampur. His body was found near a drain at the Kazan village on Wednesday. A team of Cherichampur district police picked up the dead body of Aguite and sent it for post-mortem. The motive behind the alleged murder is yet to be established, police said. No outfit, no f so far, has claimed responsibility for the murder. Police added that they are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death and attempts to arrest the killer. Manipur's police force secured a financial benefits package through a new agreement with the State Bank of India SBI on October 24. The deal compromises. The deal promises accident insurance coverage up to rupees one crore for police personnel, marking a major development in financial protections for law enforcement officers in the northeast state. IGP administrations, Konsam Jayanta and SBI regional manager Kumuncham Okendra Singh signed a memorandum of understanding at the Director General of Police Office with DGP Rajiv C witnessing the ceremony. The salary package introduces substantial insurance benefits including an additional coverage of rupees 10 lakhs alongside specialized financial services for police families. This marks the first such comprehensive financial agreement for Manipur's police force. Senior officials from both organizations attended the singing, the signing, underlining the strategic importance of the partnership between the state's primary law enforcement agency and India's largest public sector bank. Security forces seized huge chests of arms and ammunition during search operations in Manipur's Imphal East, Tobal and Chandil districts, a police statement say on Friday. Four life hand grenades, one detonator, one 9mm pistol with magazine, one 32 pistol, one wireless radio set, 30 live ammunition, 31 blank gadgets, 
cartridge, one explosive weighing about 2.5 kg, one 303 rifle, one 12 bore double barrel gun, and one pumpy gun were seized from Leirong Vipe village in Imphal East District, it said. From B. Pai Noon Village in Tobal District, security forces seized one 9mm SMG carbine along with a magazine, two SMG carbine magazines, one hand granite, 13 life rounds, one detonator, two tear smoke cells, soft notes, and two radio sets. Manipur Police Force secured a financial benefits package through a new agreement with the State Bank of India SBI on October 24. The deal promises accident insurance coverage up to rupees 1 crore for police personnel, marking a major development in financial protections for law enforcement officers in the northeastern state. IGP administrations, Konsab Jayanta and SBI regional manager Kumungjam Okendra Singh signed a memorandum of understanding at the Director General of Police Office, with DGP Rajiv Singh witnessing the ceremony. The salary package introduces substantial insurance benefits, including an additional coverage of rupees 10 lakhs, alongside specialized financial services for police families. This marks the first such comprehensive financial agreement for Manipur's police force. In a significant milestone for the Gangte community, Silalgo Gangte has successfully passed the prestigious National Defense Academy and the examinations for 2024, conducted by the UPSC, becoming the first from the Gangte community to achieve this feat. Achieving an impressive All India rank of 238 out of 395, Selal Goh's accomplishment is a source of pride for his family and community. Selal Goh, son of retired BSF sub inspector SS Gangti and Kim Tian Hat of Bunglon Village, currently resides in Deep Highly Lamka. As the only son among three siblings, he has set a remarkable example through his academic achievements. He completed his high school education at Don Bosco Higher Secondary School in Lamka, securing 78.83% in 2022, and later excelled in his Class 12 science examinations at St. Paul's Institute, achieving 84.2%. In an impressive feat, Sailor Go cracked the NDA exam on his first attempt. Recently, he also got admissions for mathematics honors at the esteemed St. Stephen's College in Delhi. He will now undergo a three year training course at NDA Kadakswala, Pune, and later a one year course at IMA Dehradun before he is commissioned into the Indian Army. Today, KNO, UK, RA, and Comran Fellowship Chair Sir Jampur held a joint meeting and issued some important notices. The notices stated that the organizations and Comran Fellowship Chair Jampur do not support the notices made by Com Union and Com Tribe Organizations Valley, KTOV. Key takeaways from the joint meeting action against non compliance. Actions will be taken against those who do not comply with when the time is right. Travel advisory, traveling or transportation journeys should be avoided as much as possible, especially on the infall to Church Jampur and Church Jampur to infall roads. Personal responsibility, lawbreakers will be held responsible for their actions. Community participation. The Comrade community will participate in future rallies organized by Kukizo. Collaborations for governance. KNO UKRE, a cool key organizations will cooperate with the government of Comram if established. These decisions were announced by Stefan Bilbert Com, Senior Information and Public City, KNO UKRE. Two soldiers were killed in actions in a terror attack in Jammu and Kashmir's Baramula today, sources said. Two soldiers were also killed in the attack, while three others were injured, sources said. The Indian Army's junior corps in a post on as confirmed an exchange of fire happened between soldiers and terrorists in the general area of Baramula's Buttapatri. Terrorists first attacked an army vehicle in Buttapatri this evening. The attack comes after as laborer was shot at 
and injured in Zammu and Kashmir. The injured man was later identified as Pritam Singh, a resident of Uttar Pradesh. The attack on the army vehicle today was the second in the Union territory in the last 72 hours. Two days earlier, seven construction workers and a doctor were killed after terrorists. At least two of them attack a housing camp for construction workers building a tunnel. Those killed were identified as Dr. Sana was from Nayingam, Kashmir's Bugda, and Gurmit Singh from Punjab's Gurdaspur, while Mohammed Hanif, Fahim Nasir, and Kalim were from Bihar. The six and seven were Madhya Pradesh, Anil Sukla, and Shasi are both from Jammu. The attackers left behind an ISAS rifle, Omar Abdullah. The newly elected chief minister called it a dastardly and cowardly attack on non-local laborers. Mr. Abdullah said they were working on a key infrastructure project. I strongly condemn this attack on an armed innocent people and send my condolences to their loved ones. The housing camp attack was, was the worst on civilians in recent months and took place just days after Mr. Abdullah, whose party won the October 8 elections, the first in a decade took his oath of office. A day after that attack, a newly former terror group called Tehrik Labak Ya Muslim was dismantled following raids across several districts of the Union Territory. The Supreme Court on Thursday set aside an order of the Punjab and Haryana High Court which had accepted an other card for determining the age of a road accident victim to grant compensation. A bench comprising Justices Sanjoy Karol and Ujjal Bhuyan therefore said the age of the deceased has to be, de has to be determined from the date of birth mentioned in the school leaving certificate under Section 94 of the Juvenile Justice Care and Protections of Children Act 2015. We find that the Unique Identifications Authority of India, by way of its circular number 8 of 2023, has stated in reference to an office memorandum issued by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology dated December 20, 2028, that another court while can be used to establish identity, is not per per se proof of that of birth. Noted the best. When it came to determining the age, the top court accepted the contention of the climate appellants before it and upheld the judgment of the Motor Accident Claims Tribunal, MSCT, which calculated the deceased age on the basis of his school leaving certificate. The top court was hearing an appeal filed by Keen of a man who died in a road accident in 2015. MSCT, Rokdak awarded a compensation of Rs. 19.35 lakh, which was reduced to 9.22 lakh by the High Court, after noting that MSCT has strongly applied the ACE multiplier while determining the compensation. The ACE the High Court had relied on a deceased advocate to calculate his age as 47 years. The family contended the High Court erred in determining the deceased age on the basis of the advocate as his age, if calculated as per his school leave certificate, was 45 years at the time of his death. At the BRICS summit in Kazan, Russia, a symbolic BRICS banknote was unveiled igniting discussions on reshaping global finance. The banknote, which features the flags of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, symbolizes the collective ambitions of these nations to explore alternatives to the US dollar in cross-border transactions. This development highlights the growing effort within BRICS to establish a more independent economic system, while less reliant on Western financial structures. Russian President Vladimir Putin made it clear at the summit that the BRICS nations are not outright rejecting the US dollar but are preparing alternatives if access to it continues to be restricted. The dollar remains the most important tool in global finance, but using it as a political weapon undermines trust in the currency, Putin remarked. He stated that 
The BRICS will not fight against the dollar, but will seek alternative methods if the situation necessitates it. If they block us, we'll find alternatives, he added. Underscoring the pragmatic approach BRICS is adopting. Putin's remarks recall within the larger context of sanctions imposed on Russia, which have significantly limited its access to global financial system dominated by the dollar. By exploring alternative currencies for trade, BRICS seeks to mitigate the risks posed by such political measures. According to Putin, using the dollar as a weapon will accelerate the transition to new financial structures, hinting that the BRICS bloc is moving toward a fair economic system. On Wednesday, October 23, 2024, the BRICS nations formally endorsed the settlement of cross-border payments in local currencies, marking a significant step toward reducing dependency on the U.S. dollar. The Kazan Declaration's issues at the submit's conclusion stated, We welcome the use of local currencies in financial transactions between BRICS countries and their trading partners. This initiative is seen as part of the broader BRICS cross-border payments initiative, which promotes a voluntary, non-binding use of local currencies. The Israeli military has accused six al Jazeera journalists of being Palestinian militants in Gaza and said they were affiliated with the Hamas and Islamic Jihad militant groups. The Doha-based media network, however, dismissed the unfounded allegations. The Israel Defense Forces IDF said that it disclosed intelligence information and numerous documents found in Gaza confirming military affiliations of six Al Jazeera journalists in Gaza with Hamas and the Islamic Jihad terrorist organizations, including personal tables, lists of terrorist training courses, phone director phone directories, and salary documents for terrorists. These documents serve as proof of the integrations of Hamas terrorists within the Qatari Al Jazeera media network, it said in a tweet on Wednesday. The military added that most of the journalists that it had exposed as operatives spearhead the propaganda for Hamas at Al Jazeera. According to IDF, Al Jazeera journalists Anas Al Shafi, Hosham Shabat, Ismail Abu Omar, and Talal Araki have ties to Amas, while Asraf Sharas and Allah Salameh were affiliated with the Islamic Jihad. In a statement condemning the allegations, Al Jazeera said it categorically rejects the Israeli occupation forces, portrayal of our journalists as terrorists, and denounces their use of fabricated evidence. The network views this fabricated accusation as a blatant attempt to silence the few remaining journalists in the region, thereby obscuring the harsh realities of the war from audience worldwide. The Doha based network said the baseless claims came after its recent expose of potential war crimes committed by Israeli forces in Gaza during the ongoing war with Hamas. Al Jazeera further claimed that it is the only international media network which is documenting the unfolding humanitarian crisis resulting from Israel's cease and bombardment of civilian populations. Network-based non-profit committee to protect journalists also slammed Israel's accusations and said the Jewish nation has repeatedly made similar unproven claims without producing credible evidence. After killing Al Jazeera correspondent Ismail Al Ghul in July, the idea of previously produced a similar document which contained contradictory information showing that Al Ghul, born in 1997, received a Hamas military ranking in 2005, when he would have been 10 years old, he tweeted. That's all from us tonight and we thank you for joining our program.